Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. Hallelujah. 
Welcome to St. Joseph Cathedral as we prepare to celebrate the ordination of Deacon Joe. And if I say that, you're here for one or the other, right? <laughs> so we have Deacon Joe Franz and Deacon Joe Tokas. Uh, we invite you to now take a few moments to prayerfully prepare yourself as we begin to ask for the Holy Spirit to come down upon these two men as the bishop invokes the Holy Spirit to ordain them to the priesthood. We ask you to take this moment of prayer for yourselves as we pray for their strength and their generosity and thanksgiving for all that they're going to offer the church. God bless you and thank you again for being here. Welcome.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, what a joyful day. I warmly welcome all of you to this ancient rite of ordination to the priesthood as we welcome two of our brothers into our presbyterate and into the ministry of our Lord Jesus in our diocese here in Buffalo. It's a happy day for their families who we greet, their, their parents and their, their siblings, their friends, and all who have come from the various parishes that they have served up to this point. I thank Bishop Malone for you for being here with us uh, this day, as well as all of our brother priests who have turned out in such wonderful numbers, as well as our deacons and religious. Again, those who, who are, are our co-workers and, and will work so closely with these, these two new, newly minted priests soon to be. But we thank them. In a special way, I'd like to uh, welcome a uh, very reverend Michael Kosicki, uh, who is rector of St. Mark College Seminary in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I think uh, Deacon uh, Joe Tokes uh, ha, uh, went, uh, attended there. So we thank him for representing the seminary there. Also, Reverend uh, Bud Stevens, uh, who, come, who is the academic dean at St. Mary's Seminary and University in Baltimore, uh, or in Balmer, as we say, uh, down home. Huh? But thank you again for representing the seminary there. And also Reverend Kevin Upadren, hopefully I said that, that, that uh, right, okay, who is also a classmate of both of our, of our uh, ordinandis, uh, who, who was ordained in May of this year. So we congratulate him also. So as we now gather as the Lord's family with great joy in our hearts, let us now call to mind our sins and ask our Father for his pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kiri. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by their ministry and life they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. Moses asked the Lord, Why are you so displeased with me that you burden me with all this people? Was it I who conceived all this people? Or was it I who gave them birth, that you tell me to carry them at my breast, like a nurse carrying an infant, to the land you have promised under oath to their fathers? I cannot carry all this people by myself, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you will deal with me, then please do me the favor of killing me at once, so that I need no longer face my distress. Then the Lord said to Moses, Assemble for me seventy of the elders of Israel whom you know to be elders and authorities among the people, and bring them to the tent of meeting. When they are in place beside you, I will come down and speak with you there. I will also take some of the spirit that is on you and will confer it on them that they may share the burden of the people with you. You will then not have to bear it by yourself. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. Gathering seventy elders of the people, he had them stand around the tent. The Lord then came down in the cloud and spoke to him. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, he bestowed it on the seventy elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. The word of the Lord. to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your foes your footstool. Princely rule on the day of your power in holy splendor from the womb before the 
dawn, I have begotten you. sworn an oath he will not change. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. So, son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Declared by God, High Priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory 
Jesus revealed himself to his disciples, and when they had finished breakfast, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Joseph Norman Franz. Joseph William Tokaz. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God, of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. I think it's appropriate as we celebrate our 175th anniversary in our diocese this year that we ordain two Joes. <laughs> as we know, St. Joseph, who is our patron of the diocese, I think uh, maybe there's more at work here than meets the eye. So again, we, we welcome them, our ordinandi, and thank them for the gift of their vocation as well as their parents and, and their families for being here with us. This is an ancient rite and sacrament of the church, and uh, it's, it's, it's a, a great blessing for all of us to gather around the Lord's table, around the Eucharist, in order to do this. God says through the prophet Jeremiah, and quoted in Dabo Vobis Pastores, that wonderful letter on the priesthood, I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. We've begun this ancient and solemn celebration with these words filled with trust in God. God is giving us these two men as shepherds 
who today are receiving priestly ordination for service to this local church in the Diocese of Buffalo. Certainly my words, my brothers and sisters, are for all of us to ponder, to reflect upon, and pray about, and to understand. But I hope you will also excuse me if maybe most of my comments are directed to our ordinandi. My dear sons, you have been called by God as we prayed in the Colic Prayer. God our Lord, you have wanted to make use of the ministry of priests to guide and govern your people. Grant that they may untiringly fulfill your will. And in the prayer of ordination, we are reminded, reminded that just as God gave the apostles co-workers, now as a help to our limitations, he is giving us co-workers for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. In today's gospel, Jesus gives Peter and his disciples that threefold call to love more deeply as he entrusts his church to their care. This Sunday, we celebrate that wonderful feast of Pentecost, that coming of the Holy Spirit into the hearts of the disciples and into our church. It's our birthday. What a wonderful time for you to be ordained and to embrace, embrace that call to love. Love for souls and your people should always be your priority and your motivation. This kind of love Jesus offers us, he implores to his disciples, feed my lamb, tend my sheep. May our Lord's threefold command to Peter always be reflected in our hearts, in ministry, as we celebrate the sacraments. You have been chosen by God, and you have put great care into your preparation and discernment through many years of study and prayer, above all, through prayer and silent contemplation that you have prepared for this extraordinary moment in your life, the extraordinary moment in the life of this church. By the grace of ordination to the sacred priesthood, you will be configured to the person of Jesus Christ, the high eternal priest. Through the instrument of my unworthy hands, you will be consecrated priests of God. We can now ask ourselves this simple question for all of us to ponder. What exactly is a priest? As the second reading from Hebrews explains, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifice for gifts. We also like at the very end the beauty of the statement that Christ came for the salvation of souls and that is what we should be working for. The Bible presents the priest as a man of the Word of God, a man chosen and sent by God. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And since we are sent, what are we to teach? Isn't that one of the qualities that we have as shepherds to teach and preach? Only the word of God, the doctrinal and moral teachings of the church, the truth about God and humankind. We are priests only to announce Christ. Christ should always be in our minds, on our lips, and in our words. People today ask the priest to show them Christ about other topics, whether it's economics, finance, law, social, or political themes. They have so many other competent people and persons to do that. We are to always preach Christ. Contemporary men, men and women 
Go to the priests seeking Christ, as they will to you. The liturgy of the word shows the priest that he is a teacher of the faith. We do not create the faith. The faith is always a gift from God. Whether we understand it as that infused theological virtue or as that doctrinal content, that is what should be firmly believed without any hesitation or confusion. The priest should be a preacher of the truth, and the truth is Christ. He needs to speak with clarity and charity, and at the same time with true freedom despite any consequences that may befall him. In sacred scripture, the priest is also presented as a man of forgiveness, one who knows what it means to be forgiven and to offer that forgiveness and mercy. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven you. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In priestly ordination, the Holy Spirit is given is given to enable the person being ordained to carry out those same actions as Christ, and to be not only an altar Christus, another Christ, but ipse Christus, Christ himself. The priest is today the visible and tangible expression of Jesus in our world. That's why he left us the Holy Spirit. St. John Vianney, that wonderful example of our priestly patron, our, our parish priest, says the priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. When you see the priest, you should think of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like the cure of ours, the priest is the apostle of the confessional, as Pope Francis remarked. The priest should also be seen as the friend of Christ. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. The priest is, above all, a man of the Eucharist. That should be the center and the core of who we are as priests. St. John Paul II commented in words that are filled with deep meaning on the priest's relationship with the Eucharist. He says, the priesthood in its deepest reality is the priesthood of Christ. It is Christ who offers himself, his body and blood, in sacrifice of God the Father. And by this sacrifice, makes righteous in the Father's eyes all mankind and indirectly all creation. The priest in his daily celebration of the Eucharist goes to the very heart of this mystery. For this reason, the celebration of the Eucharist must be the most important moment of every priest's day, the center of his life. The priest truly acts in persona Christi. When Christ accomplished on the altar of the cross in what earlier still he had instituted as a sacrament in the upper room at that last supper, the priest now renews by the power of the Holy Spirit. At this moment, the priest is, as it were, embraced by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the words which he utters have the same efficacy as those spoken by Christ at the Last Supper. Be Christ when you do that. As you can see, my brothers, there is no Eucharist without the priesthood, just as there is no priesthood without the Eucharist. But above all, there is no priesthood without a complete immersion in the intimate love of the Most Holy Trinity, fully present in the Eucharistic sacrifice. We will always have a need to rediscover our priesthood in light of the Eucharist. And isn't that what we are called to do as we come out of our COVID lockdown, as we come out in our synod 
time of synod, the Eucharist should be at the heart and the core of our contemplation and reflection. We are here also to help our Christian people to rediscover this treasury in the daily celebration of our Holy Mass, and especially in the solemn Sunday celebration. Each day we need the Eucharist to live out our priesthood and to be, be daring messengers of the gospel in the midst of the sufferings, difficulties, and hostilities that we may encounter and that should never overwhelm us. We should always keep our eyes on the ball, and that's Christ. The priest should be, above all, a man of deep and intense personal interior prayer. He should be holy in order to help the people of God to be holy. Sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. As thou didst send me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. Our Lord asks that we be sanctified, that we be holy, that we be consecrated to the truth. And he sends us forth to continue his own mission. How marvelous it is to see that Jesus sanctified himself, not only for himself, but also for his disciples. And the disciples in turn should be holy not only for themselves, but also with a view of the church and to all those who still believe in Christ after hearing his word. Above all, we priests, bishops, or deacons, our people, through our baptism, need to be holy. Archbishop Fulton Sheen, one of my favorite books, and I'm sure my other brothers, uh, brother priests, hopefully have read The Priest is Not His Own, has wonderful things to say about the priesthood in there. He says, the mirror reflects the light of the sun, but does not create it. Sanctity is a pyramid. Gracious is balm poured on the head till it flows down on the beard. Balm that flowed down Aaron's beard and reached the very skirts of his robe. God is holy. That holiness comes to earth in Christ. Christ bestows it on his priests with their cooperation. They, in the measure in which they accept, contribute to the making of the people holy. My dear brothers, my dear Ordinandi, you will realize that our holiness cannot take place without contemplating, touching, and living fully and physically the complete offering of our body through the great mystery of the priestly ordination. An offered expression in St. Paul's powerful words, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Our priesthood will be fully made a reality if we accept dying each day on the cross with Jesus. Accept your call to obedience. Accept your call to celibacy and, ch and chastity, not as a burden, but as a joy, a joy that frees you to follow the Lord more closely in his example and life, and in your life to serve your people with all that you have. Most important, my dear sons, never forget that you are receiving priestly ordination to serve the church and all souls by yourselves. Devote yourselves fully to the people entrusted to your ministry. Revel and rejoice in their gifts and call upon them. They're there to help you. Never forget the responsibility to build up that bond that you share with your brother priests. Look to each side and in this sanctuary. Each one of these men is ready to be there as a brother, to help you, to mentor you, to guide you, to listen to your woes, to rejoice with you, and again, to build that bond of fraternity that we are all called to. 
That's why the ordination is such a beautiful event in our life and why so many of our priests turn out for it. Because it's here that we see the importance of our relationship and our need for one another. To hold one another accountable. To hold one another up in prayer. To hold one another up in our call, our mutual call to sanctity and ministry. Always know also of your special bond with me. I promise to pray for you each and every day as I know you will for me. <laughs> you have to, right? It's in the, it's in the Eucharistic <laughs> prayer. <laughs> I want to congratulate, though, your parents again, your brothers, your sisters of our new priests. From today on, you will have someone with your own blood interceding for you before God. At the same time, we ask for your prayers, your continued prayers for them. I know the great sacrifice that a family makes in giving their son to the church. There will be those special occasions in the life of your family that you may have to miss because of your ministry. I know the pain and sometimes the difficulty in that. But there will also be those times of joy when you can share baptisms and marriages and, and funerals with your family. And those are special occasions. Cherish them. Finally, never forget your relationship with Our Lady, the Mother of Priests. Today is Saturday, who we always remember our Blessed Mother and our, our Saturday devotions. How often we have gone to Our Lady to tell her things, whether through the rosary or through our personal devotions to her. How forcefully we will have begged her to help us as the mother of God and our mother. Let us entrust our brothers, my brothers and sisters, to Mary, the mother of the church, mother of priests. God bless you. Dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as trustworthy co-workers with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God in the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with him to consecrate ourselves to God for the salvation of all.
Deacon, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Deacon, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood.
Great John Neumann. Saint John Paul II. Saint Therese of Lisieux. Saint Thomas Aquinas. Saint Vincent de Paul. we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ, your Son, in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, these arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when, 
you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them. You chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made the apostles who were consecrated in the truth sharers in his mission. To them, you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness these helpers whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they hold the office second in order, receive from you, O God, and by the example of their manner of life, may they inspire right conduct. May they be trustworthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to them and for the whole world. Thus may the full mem member of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
May the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand that you will do, imitate what you do, will celebrate 
and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you do, will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of the sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear the fruit which lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with your word and strengthen them with the sacraments, as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being 
and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merit and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of our, your whole family, which we make to you also for these your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve these offerings in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your Son, most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son 
may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom? Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternity.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. ordained priests, Father Joe and Father Joe, uh, to join me in their first blessing over you all. Uh, I'd like to announce where they're going, their assignments. Okay? Uh, Father Joe Franz is going to continue his studies at St. Mary's Seminary and University in Baltimore, and he'll have residence at Our Lady of Victory Basilica in Lackawanna to offer again his priestly ministry until the fall semester. Uh, Father Joe Tokaz is going to St. Gregory the Great. <laughs> Was that in Hamburg? <laughs> Williamsville, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but again, we, we thank uh, we certainly uh, thank Monsignor La Puma and also Father Leon uh, for opening their doors and accepting our, our, our new candidates, our new priests and, and their ministry uh, to the people there. I'm sure they, over the years, they will be in many of our parishes throughout the diocese. They're also going to take part, obviously, in all of the different families within, within our, our, our diocese also. So thank you. Together we will pray for our four, our, 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 new, our newly ordained priests, and then I will invite them for the first time to impart the final blessing over the congregation. Peace be with you. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. Amen. And may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. And may the blessing of Almighty God, ble God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.